Well, the year's almost over, and we've had plenty of great games like Elden Ring and God of War Ragnarok come out. I've beaten neither of these yet. I keep finding other games to play instead. Like the game I'm doing this video on. I only know about it because YouTube's algorithm blessed me with this video recommendation last week. I saw that and went, yeah, I need to play this game now. So I did. Twice. The game is called Midnight Fight Express, and it has Express in the title because this game is nonstop nuts to butts, ass blasting, action, and fighting. I think 2022 is the year of beat em up games for me. I started the year out with Shifu, I did a whole review on that. Then I finally completed Castle Crashers halfway through the year, and now we're ending it on Midnight Fight Express. And I can't think of a better game recommendation to end the year on. I've played through the game twice now, and I also plan on playing it a third time on the highest difficulty it has. Like I said earlier, it's a beat em up game. You play as a sleeper agent named Babyface who can't remember anything. Luckily, this talking drone barges into your house and agrees to tell you everything as long as you help stop the boss of this organization that's planning to take over the city. You have to fight your way through 40 levels to get to them, and along the way you'll encounter all kinds of enemies. You have criminals, mutants, corrupt cops, pirates, obese biker gangs, the Russian mob, and also Popeye the Sailor Man, who hits like a train. I'm pretty sure the Spanish Inquisition also show up at some point. Each of the 40 levels has a unique location to them. In one level, you'll be running across the top of a train dodging helicopter fire. In another, you'll be fighting gimps in a nightclub, or getting caught in a gang war at a motel, or stopping a plane hijacking, or one of my favorite levels where you're caught in a giant pillow fight with game developers wearing animal onesies. You even get in a nerf war with them. I mean, it's all good and fun until a SWAT team decides to raid the building. Luckily, Pillow Man from Community rushes in to help. So yeah, you're gonna be getting a variety of scenarios, that's for sure. Another favorite level of mine has you holding out in a graveyard. It's not too bad until one of the enemies summons zombies and you can't let them get near you. So yeah, add zombies to the list of enemies you'll deal with. The thing I really like is that the game really doesn't care how you take an enemy out. Whenever the bigger enemies first get introduced, it looks like you're gonna have to use a bunch of heavy attacks to break their guard before doing damage, but no, you can just throw this explosive at them and instantly kill them. The game is incredibly fast paced. You'll be fighting multiple enemies at once and just switching between whoever's turn it is for a beatdown. There's also parrying for whenever you end up getting swarmed, or you can just roll out of it like I usually do. You unlock this easy parry move later on, and boy, does it really make attacking large groups easy. Each time you beat a level, you unlock skill points, and you can use them to unlock different abilities as the game goes on. A feature I appreciate was being able to refund an ability so that you could just use that skill point on a different ability to unlock. My favorite things to unlock were the brutal finishers. By the time you have most of the abilities unlocked, you'll be taking on entire rooms like it's nothing. Just flipping all over the place, disarming people, beating them with their own weapon, and doing brutal finishers like it's nothing. There's melee weapons scattered throughout the game like nightsticks, wrenches, sledgehammers, or something as simple and wacky as a toilet plunger in a bathroom. You just keep bashing people with something until it breaks, and then you find something else to go wild with. There's also guns later on you grab from enemies. You're limited to only one magazine, so make your shots count, especially in the later levels when most of the enemies also have guns. I just pick up the gun of the guy I killed, even if the one I'm currently using still has ammo in it. You can also just throw your weapon instead of using it completely. On top of throwing weapons, there's also different items lying around you can just launch at people. The game gives you plenty of different ways to unleash mayhem on the different enemies you'll encounter throughout the 40 levels. You later unlock this revolver that 3D prints different types of bullets you can manually switch between. There's even one that hypnotizes them to fight for you. You also get this rope gun later on that you can use to just yank enemies all the way over to you. I really underutilize this weapon. It was near the end of my second playthrough that I realized I could just pull enemies with guns over to me instead of just rolling all the way over to them. Besides just being a beat-em-up, there's also a couple of different vehicle levels. You have to fight a helicopter on a jet ski in one level while taking out other jet skis. You can either shoot them or just jump to them and steal them. Later on in the game, you end up in a bike chase where you have to take out other bikes while dodging cars. There's another level with this turret section, which was the only time I used my keyboard and mouse for faster aiming. Yeah, you're gonna want to use a controller for this game if you're playing on PC. The game's available for consoles as well, but I played the PC version. This would be cool to have on Switch though. If it ever goes on sale on the Nintendo store, I might pick it up. I mean, the game's only $20, which is a reasonable price for what you're getting. On top of having 40 levels, each level has its own challenges. Complete them and you can unlock different items such as clothing for your character. You start the game looking out like Slim Shady, but you can customize him to look however you want. I ran through a couple levels as my baghead OC from Grand Theft Auto Online. My favorite unlock feature 
feature is that you can just use enemy skins if you don't want to customize Babyface. I did a deranged Popeye the Sailor Man run in a couple of levels. There was also the Kung Fu Panda roleplay, along with the Big Smoke Rampage, and the hentai protagonist out for revenge against their cheating boyfriend playthrough I did in a couple of levels. You can even customize the skin of the drone that's tagging along with you. I haven't even talked about the soundtrack yet. Each level has its own kick-ass soundtrack that'll just get you pumped to just run through it and go ballistic as fast as possible. It's like if they took the nightclub scene from the first John Wick movie and just stretched it out across 40 levels. The simplistic art style works really well with the over-the-top violence, the character models, and the level designs. The game also has a lot of humor scattered across it. Plus, there's also nods to other video games as well. The big ones I caught were San Andreas, Modern Warfare 2, and Portal references. There's probably many other nods in there, but those are the ones I noticed. You'll get plenty of playtime out of this if you're a completionist. On top of the challenges for each level, you also get ranked based on your score. I'm currently trying to get an S rank on all levels. Another thing is you can collect 10 gold teeth in each level. I think you get them by beating enemies with a weapon and they just spit them out. Though I'm having trouble get them on this one level where you're on the roof of a truck. They kind of just go flying into the road before I can grab them. If you're not a completionist though, and are just wanting a one and done playthrough, I think it took me a little over three and a half hours on my first playthrough, and that was on normal difficulty, so I imagine it'll take way longer on the harder difficulties, which is a reasonable amount of time for the $20 price range. Honestly, I wouldn't wait for a sale, because I think you're going to get your money's worth from this game. I have hardly any complaints with the game. It was a blast the entire way through. The only time I had any issue was the level with the one chick in the combine duster. You have to run away while throwing explosives and also shooting at it with weapons you take from enemies. But the enemies all have rope guns like you, so you'll be fighting one of them for their gun, and they get stunned by another when they try to pull you with their rope. And I'm an idiot who likes rolling around too much, so as soon as I would break free, I would accidentally roll into the combine duster and die. I ended up doing this one too many times. There was this one time I glitched out after breaking free and I couldn't move. So yeah, the grappling hook chicks are the only thing I'd even consider having an issue with. That and the guys with the pepper spray. Besides those two enemies that are easy to deal with once I realized I could just yank them over, the only real issue I have with this game is the lack of save profiles. You have to override your save if you want to completely start over. I wanted to get footage for the first level of the game and the only way you could replay it is if you completely start over. I'm trying to 100% the game, and I'd rather not lose my progress. Also, it would have been nice if you could just fully load your revolver with the different bullets. Each time you swap to a different one, it restarts the reloading. Even if you already had it chambered, it would have been cool to just preload all of them and just rapid fire the different bullets in a big skirmish. So yeah, besides those minor complaints, I have no issue with this game really. It's reasonably priced, and you'll definitely have fun with it if you're in a beat-em-ups, or just like faster-paced games. Okay, I'm out of stuff to say. Go play it.